Hey guys, on today's show, is Yesu coming out with a rival for the 7300? Let's find out. That's right here, right now on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. Welcome back to Ham Radio for Non-Techies. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL, and I run the Ham Radio for Non-Techies channel here, where we try to get you to study for and pass your test, get you on the air, and make you a, a ham operator as quickly as possible. And we do some nice reviews on some cool equipment. So today, um, today's going to be a, a quick thing. We don't really know a whole lot about this yet. It's just hit the mark. I just saw this a couple minutes ago on, on uh, Facebook, actually. And I quickly try to go through and grab some information. I want to be one of the first people to get this out to you. Uh, so, Yesu apparently has been working on a new radio. And it might just rival the 7300. And it seems to have some really cool features. If it's not just a bunch of Photoshop garbage, it might be pretty cool. So, let's go onto the desktop here and check out what I'm talking about. I am talking about the new Yesu FT710. And just looking at this picture alone, you can start just visualizing all kinds of crazy stuff might be that this thing might do. Uh, and I, you know, I particularly like this little screen we got here. So let's pop over and take a look at what we know about it so far. And okay, so what do we know so far? There's gonna be three models of this: the 710, the 710M, and the 710S. The regular 710 will be a 100-watt model, where the 710M will be a 50-watt and the 710S be a 10-watt. Honestly, if you're going to have a radio of this magnitude, I don't really know why you'd want a 50 or 10-watt and just not get the 100-watt. Um, you know what I mean? Is there going to be a price difference? Is it going to be cheaper to get the 50-watt or the 10-watt over the 100-watt? That remains to be seen. We still don't know what the, what the actual uh, manufacturer-suggested retail prices will be or the asking price. So we we'll have to wait to kind of see about that. Uh, the release date on these things is supposed to be sometime around August of this year, so next month sometime. And uh, the bands that it'll supposedly handle is going to be uh, 160 through 6 meters, and modes will be single sideband CW, AM, and FM. The specs on this radio, according to what we know so far, it's less than 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms. And it averages on on the, on the uh, dimensions of it is 9.4 inches by 3.14 inches by 9.75 inches, or as you see here, 239 millimeters by 80 millimeters by 247 millimeters. Uh, and just looking at this thing, you know, the first thing I want to note, what you want to notice, is this crazy screen that we have here. I mean, uh, let me get this out of the way. So, I mean, what is what is this thing all about? You know, is that going to be a, is that going to be a touch screen? That we're gonna get to play with and have some, you know, ex ex is it be expanded part that you get to add onto the radio? Is it something that's gonna come with it? You know, give you a larger screen so we have to get like, um, you know, hook up to a SDR or, or a, what is it? I, I forgot what it's called. Little thing to hook up so you can get run through your computer. I'm brain dead today, guys. I'm just kind of running off here. Uh, either way, that thing looks pretty cool, and you'll notice some similarities if you've uh, if you've been familiar with the uh, with the uh, FT or the FT. Uh, was the FTDX10? That screen looks pretty, pretty uh, familiar, you know, with the little meter up here like that. Your waterfall. This looks very familiar to me as far as looking like the DX10, uh, but it's gonna be a smaller form, a smaller format. So that might be kind of. It's gonna be kind of cool to figure out how that's gonna play out. And uh, what's gonna what's gonna be the features with that? We like I said, we really don't know a whole lot about this thing just yet. So I'm I'm interested to see, and I'm I'm pretty excited about that. I have a couple questions though about it. Uh, so let's move on to the next uh, slide here. So I'm bringing up the FTDX10 and comparing it next to the uh, FT710. Now the DX10 is 10.4 inches by three and a half inches by 10.3 inches and weighs 13 pounds. So it's obviously gonna be a, it's obviously a larger radio than what, than what the proposed uh, FT710 is going to be. But you can see here with side by side comparison, you've got pretty similar screens as far as the features on the screen. I don't, I'm not seeing a 3D waterfall here because we don't have a whole lot of images of this thing yet. But it looks like you got a waterfall feature. You got all different types of types of scopes. But it looks like. Unlike the uh, 991, this might have a nice larger screen similar to the FTDX10, which could be kind of cool. So my big uh, my big question is, have they improved or given you more control over the way your waterfall looks for customization of your waterfall, speed of your waterfall? 
one of the reasons I know this is petty. I know this is petty. Just throw down the comments and call me a petty SOB. I don't care. Uh, I really like the fact that I can have this. I can control the speed of my waterfall, my 7300. So if this thing has the ability to allow you to see the nice click, quick waterfall or have control over that waterfall and control the customization of the colors of your waterfall, that's going to be kind of a cool feature. And I'll say something else while we're looking at this radio, look at the side-by-side -side comparisons. If you look at the actual interface on the front of both the DX10 and the FT710, a lot of really, there's a lot of similarities. There's a couple buttons and things missing here, but there's a lot of similarities to it, um, you know, as far as your function buttons, your uh, step and uh, your step button, your AF gain, and your RF gain buttons are all the same. Your uh, VFO knob. The only thing that looks like you're missing, if you look on the FTDX10, <clears throat> sorry about that. If you look at the FTDX10, you got a lot of extra buttons around here that I'm not seeing around this uh, around the VFO knob here. But you have other stuff up top that looks like, uh, okay, so, okay, what they did is they kind of moved stuff around. Uh, I'm seeing the buttons here that you see over here, but then you look on the very top, it looks like there's some extra buttons up on top, similar to like how the 891 has those little set of buttons on the top. So they kind of just moved them around a little bit. But I'm just seeing a couple little similarities here. It looks like the mics hook up the same. Your headphones hook up the same. I can't really see what these other buttons. I know one's a power button and one might be a tune button. Uh, not really sure what this one down here. Might might be the same. Might be the, the Vox Mox button. So you got a lot of similarities uh, with this, uh, with, the FT, with the FT710. That's gonna be very similar. It might just be like it might just be like uh, Yesu's answer, like the DX10 Lite. Uh, but you know, again, I just wonder if this thing's gonna be a rival for the uh, 7300. And I guess we're gonna find out. But this is kind of this looks kind of cool. It looks like it could be promising. You know, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, you know, when when it comes out. And I, I'm pretty sure. You know, I'm well, pretty sure no one's gonna send me one to to uh, test out for him. But uh, there'll be plenty of videos on that when that happens. Uh, going back to the vid, to the original picture here, though, you know that big screen up there. One of my questions about this screen um, is: this thing going to be a touch screen? I mean, you can be able to, you can be able to operate the radio, and, and I mean, that'd be kind of cool. It looks like you know, it'll probably be about an eight and a half, nine inch wide uh, screen, making about the size of a, of a decent sized tablet. You know, probably similar to the Samsung ten inch tablets. And that'd be kind of cool. I mean, does it just snap on? Does it does it attach somehow? Does it fold over? Is it part of the radio? You know, I got a lot of questions about that. That might be uh, really worth knowing. Um, man, you know, if this thing if this thing ends up being touchscreen, you know, that'd be pretty cool. Now, as far as it going out and or going out with it and using it out in the field, I know LED screens don't use that much more power, but I wonder how much of a drain this would be if you wanted to bring this out and do Poto with it. And you had it hooked up on a 20 amp hour battery. I wonder how much how, what your runtime would be having all this stuff running and transmitting and stuff at that same time. Uh, that'd be an interesting test to figure out how much draw, draw it's going to have on your batteries. But I'll tell you what, if you were able to bring this thing out in the field and have that nice big screen right there to, to do stuff with, maybe get a little shroud to put over it so you can keep the sun off as so you can see the screen, I think that'd be pretty slick. Um, I'd really enjoy testing something like this out just to see. I never really got a chance to play um, with the FTDX10. I know a couple people, a couple friends of mine have them around, but I just haven't been with them when they were playing with them. But they seem to be pretty cool. They seem to like them. I'm still kind of a big. Uh, I'm still big on the 7300 and the uh, was the FT FTDX or that the 20 the 3910. I don't know whatever it is the, the other the other big uh, upgraded ICOM. Uh, but this looks pretty cool. And I'd like to see what the price point's going to be with this with this big screen on it. Though, I can almost imagine this thing won't be that cheap. I, you're probably looking maybe I don't know. I'd guess what fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars, maybe in somewhere in the mid mid two thousands. You know, I mean, it's it's not going to be. They're not going to hand them to you. You know, they're going to be a little expensive. But that's that looks like a pretty cool little radio. So we'll just have to see as we go along. I'm sure we'll get more information as they come out and as they find more stuff. Maybe I'll try to do another video for that. And, uh, you know, see where we can go from there. Anyway, guys, uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Go down to the bottom there. Click subscribe. Click on the little bell. Be notified when I, do, when I do new videos. And if you guys are interested in supporting the channel, feel free to join my Patreon. The links are down in the description to join my Patreon to help keep the channel running. Uh, I've also got a merch shop. If you guys haven't been in my merch shop, I've got a lot of cool stickers and 
uh, all kinds of cool merchandise, clothing, T-shirts, all kinds of cool stuff. You can get that over at hamradiofornontechies.com. And that is right there, hamradiofornontechies.com. And uh, go check it out. Again, if you guys have any questions, you can always contact me. I answer all my comments when you guys answer or when you guys comment on my videos. And uh, sometimes if your question is something that I think can really benefit a lot of other people, I'll try to make a video about that. I really enjoy those kind of questions. Let me research stuff. And sometimes I learn new things, too. But if I can't get your right answer, I'll find somebody who points in the right direction, somebody you can. Until then, guys, this is Ham Reader for Non-Techies. Have a great week. Stay safe out there. Ham harder. And we are clear.